How about now? Can you hear me now? Yes. Hey, Pastor. Okay. Sorry, I had my I had my computer um, microphone on, but God bless you all. So let me just pray again, because so you didn't hear me now. Jesus, we thank you for your presence. Now, Father, we ask even as we go through this teaching and this learning, Father, that we will receive it tonight, that we will receive what we're learning and what we're saying. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Amen, Pastor. Well, we got somebody else on. I know they're not on video, but I just want to say hi. Bless you, Brother Brian. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Here is Sydney. Sydney, you haven't seen her since she was little. Oh, Sydney, you look awesome. You see, <laughs> you see how tall she is. How tall are you? She's five eight. Oh my! <laughs> yeah, but well, good seeing you. Awesome. Good hearing your voice too. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> and um, good to see all the rest of you guys are on. I did, I'm sharing my screen. Can y'all see my screen? Yes. Okay, good. Um, someone, they, they said they started praying for me Thursdays at seven o'clock. And I said, well, that's nice. But the key to really understanding praying for your pastor is kind of, you kind of got to think about yourself. You know, let me say, what, let me tell you what I mean by that. Pastors work for you. Now, God gave an example, like Aaron was a priest, and the anointing went on Aaron's head, and it went down to the beard, and it went down to his clothing. In other words, whatever comes on the head comes to the body. So when you pray for your pastors, pray for something you want. Jesus said in the golden rule, that which you want others to do unto you, do also unto them. So tonight, I'm going to, I broke down 15 topics on how to, what to pray for, what to pray for. But tonight, we're going to learn how to do it. So that's why I wanted you to get a piece of paper and a pen, listen, but also write, because you got to think when you're praying. And, I, and what I did was, we're only going to be able to do the first five, because what I did was I only picked four scriptures per topic, so that's like 20 verses. And the first one is spiritual life. Can y'all see that? If y'all can see that, just wave to me. Do I need to make it bigger, Tisha? Is big enough? Big enough. So now I'm going to ask a question. Pastor, excuse me. I'm sorry. This is Sister Wendy. You got. You might have to recite it because I'm on the phone, not the video. I couldn't hear what she said. What did she say? Oh, hold on. Can it was you my recite fault. That's the fault. It was my fault. I have my mic down. Say that again. Can you recite the scriptures? Because I can only hear the video. I oh, don't yeah. have the. Um... Oh yeah, yeah. I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna teach it, too. Now this is how we're gonna do it. I'll, I create the topic. I found some verses. You can find verses as well. But if you wanted to pray for my spiritual life, right? what would your first prayer be like? But come off mute and say it so that others can hear it. I just want to get an idea. If you was to pray for my spiritual life, what would you say? That God will continue to um, open your heart, your ears, and lead you, um, order your steps. And keep you safe from all hurt, harm, and danger. Okay, hurt, harm, and danger. That would that would fall under protection. So, spiritual life. Tell me what you what. How would you see my spiritual life? I would pray for. I would pray. Um, uh, excuse me. 
I would thank God for your salvation. I thank I would thank God that you hear from Him. I would thank God for your relationship with Him. Thank God for surrendering is um, a walk in humility. I would thank God that uh, you're available for Him to flow through. I would say that last part that you would be available for Him to flow through. Okay, Wendy, what were you trying to say? Um, definitely pray for like a spiritual continual flow of anointing, a continual flow of increase in spiritual strength and growth, power, um, incitement, God's wisdom, encouragement and enlightenment. Um, well, well, well all right. don't, don't, don't go that way. What, when you pray, you have to have a focus, a focus, you know, because you can go all over the place and not hit the target you're looking for. So I'll start there. I just that's why I wanted you to recognize. Um, and Wendy, you got to go on mute. I just yeah. If you guys are there, I I have I have something on Pastor Rich. Yes. Um. <clears throat> um. And you're you're saying what I would pray for for me. Um. Uh, be translated to you so i i say and i've always prayed for wisdom and understanding so truth wisdom and understanding uh to to um facilitate that to the congregation so all right you, you, right we're, we're gonna get we're gonna get to that one paul but we, we're gonna have 15 topics like the first one we're going to talk about is spiritual life like if you if it was time to pray for Pastor Rich's spiritual life, what would be said? Uh, but don't worry about it, because that, that's why we're here. I'm not here to expose anybody. I'm here because I'm going to teach on how to pray for my spiritual life. And absolutely, absolutely. And mm -hmm. the good thing, and the good thing about it, exactly what you pray for me, it will come into your life. That's how you want to pray. You want to make sure that everything that I get, you get as well. Does that make Amen. sense? Absolutely. All right. So let's start. If y'all can go on mute, we're going to start with spiritual life. And the first verse is, uh, I wrote it down. Well, I typed it A, B, C, and D. Only want to get four, verse, four verses. The first one is John 4, 24, which says, God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. So if you're going to pray for my spiritual life, looking at this verse, just looking at this verse, one verse at a time, people, just focus on this one verse. Somebody tell me what would you say to God knowing that this verse is his will for my spiritual life. What would you ask God for for me? Looking at this one verse. That you would continue to, um, to continue to, um, how can I say it? Continue to walk in the faith, like continue to, to go and, you know, to believe in, like just continue to just to, to um, continue in the faith, teaching and preaching the truth. Not getting weary and well doing, you know. I, I will pray, um, you know, as the text to come, you know, that you well, know, that evangelist, that's you're going too far, you're going too far, too right. far. I'm gonna, I'm gonna teach you, I'm gonna teach you guys how to pray for one whole hour. Now, let's look at this verse, John 4 24. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Now that one verse, right? We're gonna just pray, pray from this one verse, not from what we think, but from this one verse about my spiritual life. How would I start it out? I would start out by saying, Heavenly Father, even as you are a spirit, see, God is a spirit, you have required that those who worship you, worship you in spirit and in truth, so I'm praying that Pastor Rich and Pastor Elena would not seek to worship you 
in their flesh or out of their intellect, but that they will worship you in spirit and in truth. Did anybody see that? Amen. 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 Yes, yes, Pastor. Amen. So that's how we're going to do this. We're going to have 15 times 4, which is 60 verses. I'm going to teach you 60 verses so that you can pray for me for one hour without being repetitious. And everything that you pray for me, you will want for yourself as well. You follow what I'm saying? Y'all, did y'all see that first? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so now let's go to the second one. I mean, let's go, we stay on the first one with spiritual life, but let's go to another verse regarding my spiritual life. Uh, B, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 14 through 15. Ready? But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. Now, how I did the first one, does anyone think they want to tackle a couple of, uh, a couple of pieces of this? You don't have to do the whole thing. You might just get a piece at a time. Okay, I'll help. You ready? We'll start, I'll start you off. You ready? Heavenly Father, you said in your word that the natural man cannot receive the things of the Spirit of God. You, you follow me, right? Yes, so far. Yes, sir. Yes, all, sir. You got, all you got to do is start out with a Heavenly Father and then look at the verse and see what parts of the verse you can actually say back to God. So, Heavenly Father, you said in your word, the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God because they're foolishness to him and that they cannot even know them because they're spiritually discerned. So, I'm asking that you will bless Pastor Rich and Pastor Elena to be spiritually discerning so they can receive from your spirit. Anybody see that? Yeah. See the word spiritually discerned right there? You see, and you see, I'm using the words that are in the text. How how does how do people understand the things of the spirit? They have to be spiritually discerned. So my spiritual life has to be one with spiritual discernment. I have to be able spiritually to be able to understand things that are in the spirit. My spiritual life, I have to be able to discern, understand spiritual things. So when you pray for me, you got to say, you have to ask God, let him have discernment. Let him be able to decide what's going on spiritually. So you see, if you take your time and you see these directions from these verses, God can give you a prayer. And uh, all right, we did the spiritual, we got up to spiritual discern. Now let's look at this last part. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. Let's try to tackle that. I'll give you a minute. He that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. Uh, and the spirit doesn't condemn. God doesn't condemn. So if, if, the, if the natural man is, is in the spirit of God, um, he, he is... I guess, um, what's the word? Um, he's, he's not of this world, so he's not uh, subjected to 
to that condemnation. And, and so you say, keep him spiritual so that he can judge all things right so that he does not have to be judged. I'm going by how you said it. You see? You see mm -hmm. how God, God was trying to bring something out of you. See, first he has to teach you to understand the verse, and then you have to now try to apply it to me as you're asking God for something. Heavenly Father, you said that they which are spiritual judge all things, but yet they themselves are not judged. Help Pastor Riz, Pastor Elena to live such clean spiritual lives that they'll be able to judge, to be able to decide, to, to be able to make decisions, and yet not have to suffer judgment themselves. Amen. Anybody see that? Amen. I know you. I know you guys are listening and some of you are not writing. This is where you want to start writing because the gift that God gave me years ago, and I got six books on prayer, is because when I was taught, when I began to see scriptures, I began to learn how to turn them back to prayer. That grace is on you too. Everybody in our church has this grace because it's on me, it's already on you. So that's why I want you to be, when you begin to listen, you can write certain things down that you might be able to say, okay, I'm going to say this. I would say this to God. I might not say it exactly the way Pastor Rich said it, but I would say it like this. Because that's the ultimate, ultimately, we're going to create a book of prayer so that everyone can get an idea of what to say so that you don't be going this way and that way. Because if, if, you, are, if you pray scattered, you'll be done in five minutes. The average person prayer life is like three to seven minutes long because they get everything out that's in their heart. But if you put all of this in your heart, it will take you a little bit of time and you'll feel like resting after you pray because you'll be nice and tired. You still here? All right, see. Amen, yeah. See, because we, we, you know, we got to go really, really fast. You ready? C, Ephesians 1, 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Uh, like, we, like we did, I'll give you a, an opportunity to see what you think you can say to God regarding that verse when you're praying for my spiritual life. And I say me, I'm thinking past later too. I'll try. Um, I'm sorry, Pastor. Let me, uh, Ephesians 1, chapter 3. Yeah, it's on the screen. Oh, uh, I'm not on the, on the screen. I don't have that. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not just voice. Voicemail. I, I uh, can try it. Okay, let Nisha try it, uh, Paul. Okay. Okay. So... Heavenly Father, you said that you have blessed us with all spiritual things in heavenly places. Let every blessing that you have given us be fully manifested through the lives of our pastors and through our church. Amen. Right? Anybody else? This one, I mean, she, she, she started off for y'all. Y'all should be on a roll now. One thing that she one thing that she did, she kind of prayed in reverse. She prayed for her first, then pray for me. <laughs> it has more it has more power when you're praying for the person. <laughs> oh, I said through our pastors and through our church. Well no, you said you said bless us. You know, in other words, Bless them, then us. See, because what happens is when 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 you like say like uh, unless somebody else goes, somebody go ahead, you got this one. This one's not that hard. Okay, Pastor, I'll try. Um, Heavenly Father, you said in your word, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly, in heavenly places in Christ. 
Father, I ask that you would bless Pastor Rich and Pastor Elena with all, all spiritual blessings and heavenly places in Christ. That works. That works. Somebody else, because there's something in that beginning that you can pause on and take it to God. Go ahead. Try to try it. somebody else. Watch this. Don't. All right. Let me give you a, a point. You ready? What are the first five words? Heavenly Father, no, no, blessed no. be no, the that, God. That, no, what's what's the first five words of that? Blessed word? be the God and Father. Now, what does it mean to bless it? Let bless be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. What is that actually saying? Praises, honor, glory. To who? To God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So at that point, you can actually begin to praise God. Amen. You see, when you, you see, because you, you want to have your, your heart open. Even though you're praying for me, don't ever forget to take opportunity to be thankful to God for God. Amen. Amen. You know, bless Amen. God and Father, you know, oh God, you're wonderful. Hallelujah. You are magnificent. No one can fathom how you have blessed us with spiritual blessings in heavenly places. I give you praise. I give you all the glory for you did it. You, you see, even though we know we're praying for someone else, whenever you, whenever you get a chance to bring God in that he might be thanked, praised, worshiped, and glorified, take the opportunity. Amen. So I'll, let Amen. Somebody, I'll let somebody add to that. Um, well, take your time, though. Heavenly, okay. Heavenly Father, we, uh, we bless you and, and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed our pastors with all spiritual blessings and heavenly places in Christ. Can I continue? Yeah. Heavenly Father, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, O oh Father. We bless you. We praise you. We lift you high. We thank you for you have blessed us with all spiritual blessings and heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We ask, Father, that you would continue to bless Pastor Rich and Pastor Elena, O oh God. Father, hallelujah, we ask that you would open up their eyes that they could see in more heavenly places. Oh God, I don't know. I started good. No, that, that's good. And, and the way you prayed helped me to recognize that I was wrong when I corrected Nisha. So Nisha, I apologize. You see what happens when, when, when people pray, God can speak to you. So Nisha, you were not wrong. You were, you were quoting the scripture as it was. Please forgive me, sorry. You forgive me? <laughs> No, Na Naima. That's fine. <laughs> Naima, you know, don't bail out like that. You were doing fine. You see, the spirit was the spirit was using you, but maybe you were used to having control. So the spirit was using you. So don't bail out when the spirit uses you like that. All right, so y'all saw that one? Yeah. All right, we gotta keep moving because yeah. it ain't look like it don't look like we're gonna get far tonight with, with how long these things take, but it's okay. D. Yeah. He is First Corinthians fourteen one. Oh, oh where am I? Maybe I'm wrong. Okay, this one is very, this one's gonna be very long. Ready? It says, "Follow after charity, or follow after love, and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that ye may prophesy." And then I added the gifts. Now there are diversity of gifts, but the same Spirit. Go to page two. And there are diversities of administration, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it's the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. But to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to, the, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. To another, the working of miracles, to another, prophecy, to another, discerning spirits, to another, diverse kinds of tongues, to another, the interpretation of tongues. 
But all these work of that one in the self same spirit, dividing to every man separately as he will for as the body is one. Oh, that should not be there. Sorry. <coughs> as he will. Now, what I did here, I added the gifts of the spirit. So when you're praying for my spiritual life, how many of you would like for me to have all the gifts in operation? Amen. 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 Absolutely. I, I have not because you asked not. <laughs> so it says here, First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1. Now, but just help me. What are we praying for? Uh, charity, spiritual gifts, and prophecy. Prophet no, time. no, you're oh. praying for my spiritual life. Yeah, for your spiritual life. Oh, okay. <laughs> my spiritual life. All right. Okay. My spiritual life entail. Yes, spiritual life. Okay. First Corinthians 14, 1 says is that I should follow after love. I should, I should follow after love and desire spiritual gifts. And that I may prophesy, that I may be able to speak for God. So part of my spiritual life is following after love, desiring spiritual gifts, prophesy. So if you was to pray for my spiritual life with, with first corinthians chapter excuse me first corinthians chapter 14 verse 1 dealing with just those three things what? how would you pray for me in my spiritual life um I, I, i'll give it a shot um heavenly father um we thank you lord for you are the god of the heaven and earth lord we thank you lord for our pastors our your co-laborers in christ lord that they will follow after charity they will desire the best spiritual gifts and that they and th that they will prophesy overall prophesy over everything in jesus name like but i'll continue though but um how that how feel? leads yeah now how'd that feel so so yeah you felt, felt it, didn't powerful. you? Yeah, I felt the spirit, yeah. But you, you felt like you had a right to ask that in that particular way. Yes. Now, anybody heard that prayer? How did it feel when you heard it? Anybody? Hey, Amen. I was in agreement with it. It, it felt like he was actually praying for your spiritual insight and spiritual growth as as for a believer to continue to be able to have the um the clarity and openness to be able to hear what the spirit has to say in order to be able to continue to receive the the spiritual gift of prophecy and of to be able to desire that charity which only can come through love that's what it felt like he was saying but you felt he was he was on point like in other words, he had a yeah. right. He had a right to say what he was saying. See, that's that's when it says pray according to the will of God. See, we're looking at scriptures, we're looking at verses, and we're turning them into prayers. It's actually it's actually an art and a gift. But you have that gift. You just need to you just need to be calm and in a place where you can actually let that gift flow. All right. Now I'm not going to deal with the the gifts because that would take too long i've let you look at those gifts but you can create that into a prayer but before we get into the second one which is time management anybody else want to do first corinthians 14 1 want to give a, a, a try at it and you know what however you speak to god if you say father if you say lord if you say jesus if you say god however you start your prayer is how the prayer starts But if nobody wants to start, Amen. I'll, I'll try it. Father God, we give you praise tonight, oh God. Father, we pray, oh God, that our pastors, Pastor Richard, Pastor Elena, oh God, will continue, oh God, to follow after charity, oh God. Father, let them desire every spiritual gift, oh God, that you've opened their heart to receive. And Father, but let them rather, let, let them rather, 
Father, that they may prophesy, oh, Father God, hallelujah, that they could exhort and heal and prepare people, oh, God, for the next level. Father, I thank you, and I give you praise in Jesus' name. Now, it sounds like you believed that while you were praying. Oh, that was good. But it, it sounds like she believed it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And let me, let me just say this so you don't feel funny or awkward. When God created the tabernacle, he set people in position to do certain things. So they call certain people prayer warriors and, and different things. And all that is well and good. But when you are really skillful in the word of God, you don't need a title. You know, because sometimes prayer warriors go off the deep end and they fight stuff that's not even there. <laughs> a lot of prayer warriors, they, they, they become so spooky. But when you are skillful in the word of, when you're skillful in the word of God, it will keep you grounded as you pray. Amen. You know, and you, you saw how she started out, but then she calmed down and, and, and yeah. fell into a flow. That's what the that's the power that the word of God has over us. All right. I'm not listen, I doubt very much if we get all five done tonight, because I'm gonna I'm just gonna do an hour. We're gonna finish at 9:15. So the second one is time management. That's kind of weird, right? All right. Yeah. But it's true. And I'll start with the letter A. It says, Ecclesiastes 3.1, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Now, mm -hmm. pastors get 24 hours in a day, just like everybody else. Now, if you was to pray for me to manage my time to the best of its ability, and this was one of your verses, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Now, just like we started with the first one, we're gonna start this one the same way. Don't look at the verse right now. Look at what the topic is, time management. What does that mean? It means that there's a time limit. <laughs> okay. Manage your time. Manage your time. Just time management. Managing Manage time. time. Yeah, maximize it to the best, uh, efficient, efficiently. What does it mean to manage? It means to manage is to, to look after, to, to over Whoa. oversee. Make time. Say that again. Or to use your time wisely. Let's play. Oversee. Manage, right? Do it again. Yeah. So overseas to um to kind of supervise, you have to be supervise your um your time. Oversee your time. What was you gonna say, brother Donovan? I said to use your time wisely, like to use it. You know, manage your time wisely, use it wisely. Because you know, there's only 24 hours in a day, but you got to use it wisely. How are you gonna use your time? You're gonna do this. You're gonna do that. You know what I mean? Like, you gotta use it efficiently and 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 product and productively. See now, praying for me, without even using the scripture. You can say that. Let him say what you were saying, Donovan, and Paul say what you were saying, and put that into a, a prayer. Watch this. Okay. Um. All right. Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you. Uh, we lift you up. Uh, God of heaven and earth, um, we thank you, Lord, for uh, our pastors, Lord. We uh, we pray in the name of Jesus that you give our pastors time management, that they'll be able to use their time wisely and efficiently and productive for kingdom purposes, Lord, and for the purposes in their businesses or in their in their ministry, Lord, that you appointed them to, etc. Amen. Does that make yes. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Amen. Yes. yes. Amen. Well, Paul, you want to add to it? Um, uh, Heavenly Father, I'll give it to Heavenly Father. We 
We thank you for your insight. We thank you for um, allowing uh, Pastor Rich and Lana, Pastor Elena to manage their time uh, wisely to oversee the congregation and um, make sure that everything is um, according to your scriptures in truth and in, and, and in, and, and in your, your wisdom. Um, and we pray. You see, you see what you did? You used what you, what you believe management meant. That's the key. You use what mm -hmm. management meant and you turn that into a request. See, praying, it involves intellect. But oftentimes we go to our heart and then we get overwhelmed. We can pray better from our head than from our heart if we really, really think about it. That's why God allows us to go through things. Because when we're going through things, it's on our mind. See, if something's on your mind, it's easy to pray about. But when stuff is on your heart, it can overwhelm you. And all you can do is just get into despair, get depressed. But if you're thinking about something, you can actually articulate it. You know, past, you know, help pastor manage his time. Don't let him waste time. You know, think about a manager on the job. You know, you will fire somebody if they're sitting around procrastinating, being slothful, being lazy. Oh, did he just tell you to pray to God that I won't be lazy? Come on. Think about it. Don't let Pastor Rich be lazy. Don't let Pastor Rich waste any time. You know, you get what I'm saying? Manage yeah. a manager, a manager yeah. makes sure that every minute counts. If they're gonna pay you at the end of the day, you have to earn that money. So let's pray that Pastor Rich uses his time wisely. So let's look at some verses. Anybody saw that? Yes, yes. So you see how you see how long you can actually pray? <laughs> When you have, when you use your intellect, when you use your intellect, you can you can actually pray more efficiently. So Ecclesiastes three one, I know some of you while the guys were talking, you were studying this verse to see how you was going to come up with something. <laughs> to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. Now we're dealing with time management for Pastor Rich. Let's do Ecclesiastes three one. Who's going to give it a shot? Well, I'll give it uh, a very good. Come on, somebody. Father God, in the matchless name of Jesus, oh God, because you are God of timing and in order and decency, oh God. Father, there is a, a, to everything, there is a season and to every and every time to every purpose under the kingdom of heaven oh god father we ask that our pastors oh god pastor richard pastor elena oh god will handle their time and decency and in order father god father we are aware that they are parents we are aware oh god that they are in Employees, we are aware, oh God, that they are the under shepherds of the church of the LOJ Jersey City Father. And we ask that you would bless them, oh God, with time management, oh God, that no time would be wasted, Father, and that everything will be done in decency and order in Jesus' name. Anybody else? I can add, Pastor, that's okay. Now, yeah. Father, we thank you that they will also know, Heavenly Father that just as you created the four seasons, oh God, you have in, in the future for all of them as well, Father, for Pastor Rich, Pastor Elena, a season to be able to labor, a season to rest in your green pastures, a season, oh God, where they will hear only from you and be able to clearly understand what you're speaking unto them. We pray, oh God, that they would have an ear to hear what you are telling them to do at the right season. So when they plant the seeds, oh God, it will prosper in its season and they will be able, oh God, to seek the manifestation of their force. In <laughs> Jesus' name we pray. Hey, man, that was good. That was really good. Don't get too excited, y'all. I understand. <laughs> but that's what I'm trying to tell you. See, when, 
where where the spirit of the Lord is, there's going to be great liberty, and that's what you want. And and don't don't be so quick to end your prayer. Don't be so quick to say in Jesus' name. Don't end it. Don't put an end on it. Just stop. Don't you know? Because there's more to say. Because when you say in Jesus' name, it kind of like you're telling the Holy Ghost you don't want to hear no more. You know, like you're done. So yeah. right. <laughs> No, not, that's not that's not quenching the spirit. That's, uh-huh. that's just how people they learn to pray. That. They learn to end their prayers respectfully like that. So that's okay. that's that's not quenching. But it's the, okay, and so question. So sometimes I mean, some people pray fast. Now. Some people pray sl- slow, but you can you can deepen it, right? You can deepen that. Uh, it depends on prayer, like that that uh, ecclesiastic. Yeah, okay. yeah. It depends on the person, but I don't. I don't like to think that one person is deeper than the other or prays better than the other. Mm-hmm. I, think, I think based on relationship, God hears us all. Because we can, we can right. have to, we can, we can go so deep that we miss that God was on the first floor and we went all the way down to the basement looking for him. <clears throat> so it's a matter of being able to discern where we are and where he is in the, in the midst of the prayer. So listen, for time's sake, I only got 15 more minutes. Now, B, B is going to get a little harder now. Y'all was able to do Ecclesiastes pretty good. Ephesians 5, if you're going mute, I can just read it. Ephesians 5, 15 through 17 says this. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore... Be ye not all wise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Now, it's kind of saying, if, if y'all all can go on mute, because somebody's chewing some real hard uh, potato chips. Right? Pastor, that was Ephesians 5, what verse? Ephesians 5. I'm going to email this to you tonight, Paul. Uh, okay. Ephesians 5. 15 through 17, it says, see then that you walk circumspectly and not as fools, but as wise. Now, you might not feel comfortable saying this with other people on the line, so I'll say it, you know, first. Don't let Pastor Rich walk like a fool. Let him walk very wise, very circumspectly. You see, you might not want to say that with other people because <laughs> they might get offended by you saying, don't let them walk like a fool. But the bottom line is you don't want your pastor to be a fool. I can get one amen. One. Amen. Amen. So, amen. 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 Because the Bible says the righteous are bold as a lion. Now, if you want something for yourself, do you want to be a fool? No. No. And no. you pray that I'm not a fool. Kind of fool. <laughs> you, you, you follow what I'm saying? So you mm-hmm. see, like we said in the beginning of the lesson, what you want for yourself, you should want for your pastor. Because we are Absolutely. Connected. Whatever I get, you get a double portion because you get your stuff anyhow. And then it says, redeeming the time because the what? The days are evil. Wherefore, be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Now, the, you know, the class is progressing pretty fast, so we're not gonna, I'm not going to give you an opportunity to do that one. I'm going go, to go a little ahead. C, John 9, 4. You ready? This is Jesus talking. Darlene, are you there? Can you see this? Yes. <laughs> Can you read John 9, 4? John 9, 4. I must work the works of him that sent me. While it is day, the night cometh when no man can work. Amen. Now we're dealing with what? Time management. Now, if you wanted to change, if you wanted to turn the words of Jesus in John 9 4 into a prayer for the pastors regarding time management, let's work this one. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. How would one of you turn that into a prayer? And you got to remember that the focus is my time management. 
No, no, Father. Now, Father, I do thank you for the all times and seasons is in your hand. And Father, I thank you that our pastors, Lord God, have their hand to the plow and they're not looking back. And Father, they would continue to work in that which you have given them to do as you were sent to work in the thing that you were given to do. While it is day, while light's available, Father, I thank you, Lord God, that when night comes, no man will be able to work. But Father, I thank you that while it is day and while you have given us this time, and while you've given them this time, Father, I thank you that they will work the works that you have commanded them. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for the vision, the mission, the purpose, and the plan that you have installed and instilled in them to do. And it will be carried out just like your work was carried out. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. And you, if you notice, I don't know if you listened to her, she prayed the same prayer twice. Why did she do that? Because she knew she was reading the first one. And then she was listening the second time. You see, it both worked. See, she used faith. She repeated the word of God. And then an anointing got a hold of her and she was able to flow more readily. Did you see that? No? No, I didn't see that? Yes. I, it, it was, yeah, she did repeat, but um, it was more um, insightful the, the second time. Right. She said, from actually, my perspective. And you know what? She actually said the same thing twice, but there was an anointing on the second one. And, and the reason why she did it, I just want to show you how it happens to you. That's why you don't ever feel bad about praying twice. Don't ever feel bad about repeating yourself. Because sometimes you got to get under an anointing to make sure that you released it in faith. Because she got, stuck, she got stuck one place about the night. She got stuck at the night. <laughs> now, the night cometh when no man can work. Dealing with time management, what would that mean to you? The night comes and no one can work. What does that mean? How would you I, for me, for me, uh, uh, I was thinking about that, Pastor. And I, uh, uh, for me, I, it was just, uh, you know, you have certain amount of time that is given to you to to read and pray the scriptures and to learn the word and to um i guess witness if you if you will um if, if that needs uh get, to take place get the work done uh, and get the work uh, before the nighttime get the work done and uh, yeah <laughs> and um and you you have limited uh time during the day to do that yes anybody anybody um, want to add to that before we uh, go to, uh, I, I, the scripture says, Pastor, that tomorrow is not promised unto us. So he could be referring to that we need to, whatever the spirit gives us to do today, whatever the mission or the vision is for today to be accomplished, it, that is what should be done today. Imagine, yeah. imagine praying that way for me. You know, I would be a blessing. Would you, do you know that if y'all gang up on me, y'all won't have a two-hour message on Sunday? <laughs> have <a> eight hours. <laughs> no, it'll be less time because I'll manage the time better. Oh, true. Yeah, because I'll be able to get the work done. You see, but you but you notice what happened with, with Deaconess Elizabeth? Does anybody know what just happened? Naisha, did you see that? Somebody saw it. I know one of you saw it. Tisha, you saw it? You saw what happened? Um, she added the rest of the verse. She took another, she, she added a different verse that made sense to time management. That's, Amen. see, that's, I, see, that's what I was waiting for. I was hoping someone would feel as if you had permission to hear from the Holy Ghost and add from another verse, you know, and, and she did. Uh, and hey man, I even, wanted yeah. to do that one too. All right, but we're running out of time, so don't. Uh, you got it. Long as you, long as you wanted to do it, you can write it. 
praying for me Thursday night. You got it. You got it. <laughs> I'm just doing this because we run out of time. I only got six more minutes. You ready? Psalm 90, verse 12. You ready? So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Well, how does this start in the beginning? Teach us to number our days. What, does, what do you think that is referencing? Time. Elizabeth said something to that effect a minute ago. Tomorrow is not promised. Yeah. Number our days. You see what it says? Teach us to number our days. We don't know how much time we have. But when you're praying for me to have time management, say, Lord, he's got to get it done. You know. That's a, that's a powerful script. That's powerful right there. And imagine applying that to me in prayer. Because many times, you know, Teach Pastor Rich to number his days. Let him know that this thing is not for tomorrow. It's for today. And how does the last part go? That he may what? My heart, our hearts unto wisdom. But you're praying for mm -hmm. me, right? right? Now, other than the five of you, let someone else try. Nisha, go ahead, try it. No, nice to speak in Spanish. Yeah, sorry, I was uh, stepped away doing something. Sorry. Okay, oh, so you, you wasn't able to hear it. Psalm 92, 90, 12. All right, somebody else that heard it, let's try it. Psalm 90. Tisha, you there? Yes. All right. I will ask God. I will Father God, we we thank we, Father God, we thank we thank you, Lord God, for your word, Lord God. We know that we know that in your word is wisdom, Father God. And your word said, apply it to our to our hearts. So we thank you, Lord God, that our pastors will apply the word of wisdom in their heart, and they will teach it with full truth. In Jesus' name. Okay, but we're we're not talking about that type of wisdom. We're talking about time management. How can okay. yeah yes the topic is time management. <laughs> how can I apply my heart unto wisdom regarding time management? Anybody else that I cut off? Y'all want to go? Because we we going we got three minutes. Father, that you, Father, that you would give our pastors the wisdom on how to effectively manage their day or manage the things that you have given for them that day which to accomplish that they would have the wisdom of god and not the wisdom of man to work effectively in the thing that you called them to do that day keep the time that day. keep the time Today. Today. that day amen and and that you know and then teaching them for his day you got at the beginning part. Teach him to number his days. Remember that part? Mm, okay. Y'all getting tired? I can give it a shot. Yeah. Yes. Um, Abba Father, uh, we thank you for, for our pastor, who you you who you will teach how to number his days, and uh, how to use his time wisely and apply that time and in, in those days in that day for to use the wisdom of God to speak to the congregation in Jesus' name. <laughs> all right. Don't talk about the congregation. We're not talking about the we, All right. Uh, we're, we're, all right. I know everybody getting tired. All right. Teach me to number my days so that my heart is filled with wisdom so that I don't walk foolishly. Can See? I go? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, but Father God, we thank you, oh God, as you have taught and shown our pastors to walk circumspectly, Father, not as fools in your sight, Father God.
God, we give you praise, oh Father, that you would teach them now to number their days, oh God. Father, we are aware that there's only 24 hours in a day. Father, we thank you, hallelujah, for every task that you've given them, Father, that they would complete it in a timely manner, Father. We thank you that they are applying the wisdom that you've given them, oh God, and that the, your word had they hid in their heart. Father, we thank you that they will work while it's day, Father. <laughs> Father, we give you praise. Don't laugh. Jesus. It's good. It's good. I just know you're ready to go to tomorrow. It's good, though. That's how it's supposed to be. And I'm 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 grateful. Now we only did we only did two. It took an hour to do two. So we're not gonna we're not gonna get the other three tonight. We'll we'll get it later on. Um, but like I promised, I'm going to send these ver uh, these verses to this this file, uh, this word document to each of you. And before we close, number three would be family. And when you begin to look at it, you know you begin to say, "Children, obey your parents and the Lord." You know uh, that can be. Uh, you guys that you know you would pray that the, the people in the church would obey as if we're your parents and that my natural children will honor their father and mother so that they can live long upon the earth you see those verses right um also it says if i don't provide for my own household i'm worse than an infidel so you pray that pastor rich keeps income to provide for his family so he's not, he's not an infidel. So um, anybody anybody learn anything tonight? Yes. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. yes, it was good. And yes. it's, it's, it's not easy, but focus during teaching is vital. Amen. A thought is like a slippery fish. You know, you ever grab a fish that's just coming out the water? It's gonna slide, slide right out of your hand. You need a net. And our hearts are like nets that kept, capture the word of God. But I wanna thank you all for participating. Um, we will continue with this. We have a long way to go. We only got to two. We have 15 more. Uh, I'll, I'll email you this. This, this will be the first, um, first five. I believe they're okay. praying. Thursday nights? Are they, what time are they praying Thursday nights? Seven. Seven o'clock. You, you guys got these. You can actually start. And I'll be honest with you, and, and I'll share this, and hopefully um, just what I'm about to say might not come across the right way because people think differently. You can pray for something. And somebody can pray it also if you don't have a problem with somebody praying the same thing you pray. Some people get offended. Some people say, well, I just prayed that. Why did you pray it behind me? I don't have a problem because maybe it's on each of your hearts. You know? And if the person listening is in agreement, if the person is in agreement and they hear you pray it, they might not have to pray it. But if they're hearing, that's why it's important when you're in a prayer meeting to hear the prayer that's being prayed. Because if you hear what's being prayed and you agree, you might not still have the burden to pray the same thing. But if you hear it and you still have the burden, I'm just asking that those that have prayed it be merciful to those that pray it again. Don't think that they're trying to overshoot you or you know make you feel some sort of way. You know, it's a worldly cliche, but it's still true. Much prayer, much power. Little prayer, little power. So I need you to, to be disciplined enough that if somebody prays the same prayer that you prayed, that you'll be merciful to them. You know, that maybe they, they also have the burden to release it too. So don't feel offended. Mm -hmm. don't, you mm -hmm. don't feel offended if you hear it prayed twice. You know, um, but if you think the person is doing it out of pride, then talk to them on the side. You know, and that, did that make sense? 
Yes. 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 Sorry. I just just, want to add something, Pastor, before we leave. Um, And uh, because I've always had some, I mean, we're all family here, so I feel open to saying um, to to pray. So I'm I'm very grateful that I'm in this call, and I'm grateful for Sister Wendy because if it wasn't for her to give me the last minute. Uh, shout out to get on I wouldn't have but um, this is very powerful for me because I you know I don't like to pay in repetition and I find myself doing that Um, but this just gave me an insight as to um, how to not just pray but to meditate on the word and that just came to me so by doing this uh, I find myself meditating on the word and 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 uh, as a result, I, you know, you get deeper in prayer. So that's that was just my take back on, yeah, on it. So I appreciate and, it. And that's the goal, because once the word of God gets open to you, you know, sky sky is the limit, because heaven is the sky. And um, and that's the key, you know. If you know spiritually speaking, if you do know how to Pray in tongues, pray in tongues while the person is leading in prayer. One thing, one thing I, I know for a fact that a lot of people do not fight against during uh, phone meetings, Zoom meetings, is just because you're in the house doesn't mean you're not in a prayer meeting. You know, you really got to lock in what's going on because just because no one can see you, God can see you. And I think the Bible says, Amen. I think the Bible says, when you when you seek me, you seek me with your whole heart, your whole mind, and your whole strength. You know, so you need to really begin to show God. Uh, there was a man who was paralyzed, right? And he had four friends. And the four friends was trying to get in the house where Jesus was, and they could not get through the door. And the Bible says, They climbed up to the roof, ripped the man's roof off, and just dropped the guy in front of Jesus. And you know what the Bible says? And the Lord saw their faith. Can y'all go on mute so I can finish this last point? It said, and the Lord saw their faith. The Lord saw their faith. So many times when you're in a house, in your home, you're comfortable, you got to remember, you're still going to be tempted to do your own thing because you think nobody's watching. The Lord's watching. And that's why we got to really understand, I need to focus. I want an anointing from God. I'm going to have to focus. If somebody else is praying, I'm going to have to be there to be in agreement. Because what if somebody says something wrong? Amen. What if somebody, unfort- by mistake, release a curse during prayer and you're not listening? And, and you know, and you want to curse on you? No, you see, so you gotta, you gotta, you know, be attentive. Whenever the word of God is being shared, whenever you're hearing the word of God, give, do, give all diligence to the to the word, you know. And these prayer meetings, you know, they're vital. But the it's 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 to me, and don't get mad when I say that. Intelligence in Spanish, inteligente. I think we need to be intelligent prayer people that pray, pray with the understanding, you know, pray with the spirit, but pray with the understanding. And tonight we saw just two topics and we were able to see understanding. I asked Dr. Nisha to send um, those, those topics out to you with hopes that you will begin to search for scriptures. Now, what I would like for you to do is you're going to get a copy of this email tonight Add scriptures to it. Let's create an actual book. But make sure, make sure that your scripture fits the topic. Don't just come up with something that you heard in the spirit. <laughs> Let's make sure it fits in these, in these five topics. I'm only going to send you five tonight, maybe five next week, five the following week. Is that okay? So let's yes, just, Pastor. Okay. Sure. Also, tonight's uh, 
video. I'll send this to you. What I'm maybe I'll I'm gonna send you a file from Adobe. I'm gonna send you a file from Adobe. It'll be a link to this video on YouTube. I'm gonna make I'm gonna create a, a YouTube video link an MP3 file of the audio in case you want to you know play the audio in your car or whatever and also the scriptures so you're gonna get a, a YouTube link for the video um, an MP3 audio file and then also the word document is that okay mm. Amen. so let's 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 just pray now Jesus I thank you tonight for for being truth, your word is truth. You've given us the spirit of truth. And you said when two or three are gathered together in your name, there you are in the midst. So I thank you that you are in our midst and we've learned something. And Father, that even, even though we were learning, we were actually praying. And, and Father, even as I received the prayers that were prayed, I release a hundredfold back on each and every one on this line. And Father, even financially and physically, people that, that need healing in their bodies, healing in their families, miracles, financial wisdom, Father, I release it upon each and every one of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, God bless you. You know how I hang up on you. So say good night to everybody before I end. Good night. Good night. God bless. Good night. Good night. God bless. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. God bless. Good night. 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 Good night.